Hello students, in continuation with my experimental uh, details of your BTEC first year engineering physics lab, now I will discuss the experiment of nodal slide. In this experiment, you find the focal length of the combination of two thin convergent lenses, which have been separated by a specific distance apart. And along with that, you verify the formula for combination of thin lenses as 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 minus x upon f1 f2 where f is the focal length of the combination of lenses f1 f2 are focal lengths of the two individual lenses and x is the distance between the two lenses which is usually taken as four centimeter or six centimeter the experimental setup consists of an optical bed consisting of a source of light it can be an ordinary bulb a cross slit a nodal slide stand and a plane mirror on which the image falls and you can track the image of the cross slit now the uh, observation table what we will do is first we will draw three observation tables in this experiment for f F1 for first lens, F2 for the second lens, and F1 plus F2, that is combination of both the lenses in the third table. First table, we will make the light incidence on first face of our convex lens, and position. we will fix the position of cross slit. We will focus our lens by shifting it on the nodal slide optical bench. Wherever we find the image most sharp, we will take that reading. We will subtract the reading of the axis of nodal slide from the cross slit and we will get the focal length. Similarly, we will do for the second lens. In the third table, we will put both the lenses on our nodal slide setup and find the combined focal length. So suppose first length focal length comes as 30 centimeter and in the second it comes at 50 centimeter. So the third table, you can even find the combined focal length from this formula, which will be 1 upon F1 plus 1 upon F2 minus D upon F1, F2. The biggest precaution in this experiment is that bench error should also be taken into account. Nodal slides should be fixed properly and focusing should be done for the most sharp or bright image. Okay, magnification is usually ratio of image distance upon object distance. How many cardinal points are there in the system? Two nodal points, two focal points, and two principal points. And uh, convex lens has a uh, positive focal length. Concave lens has negative focal length. Next, polarimeter. In polarimeter experiment, we will find the specific rotation of an optically active substance that is sugar solution given to us. We require a polarimeter, a sodium vapor lamp, sugar solution, and distilled water. Now, the formula used will be specific rotation is equal to 1000 into theta upon LC, where theta is angle of rotation of the plane of polarization, which we have come to find out in the lab. L is my length of tube in centimeter, which is usually 20 centimeters. C is percentage strength of the cane sugar solution in grams per cubic centimeter. My experimental setup diagram will consist of a light source and Nicole prism combination, which will change my unpolarized light falling on the setup into polarized light. Then it will drop on the half shade device, then polarimeter tube, which is bulged in between so that in case there is any draw, uh, a bubble, we can adjust it in these uh, bulges so that my length of the liquid, which I am taking as 20 centimeter, doesn't get disrupted. Then again, analyzer, which will consist of a combination of Nicole prisms. And finally, I will see my polarized light at this end. Once I see my polarized light, I am going to now start taking readings. My least count for the polarimeter will come as 0.1 degree and length of tube is 20 centimeters. My observation table will consist of two positions of the vernier. That is first position where I will see full moon 
on my 0 to 360 degree scale, I will take the reading of main scale, vernier scale. Total I will write as main scale plus vernier scale into least count, that is 0.1. And at another position of 180 degree difference, I will get the second position of my vernier. So suppose I set my tube with distilled water for 0 degree and 180 degree. Now I will add sugar solution to my setup and immediately this plane is going to rotate. Suppose I get concentrations of 8%, 10%, and 12%. The amount of rotation of MSR, VSR, I will note for the same. Take the mean of rotation, put it in the value of specific rotation formula, 1000 into suppose 13 degree rotation has taken place. Upon length, 20 centimeter concentration, suppose 8%, and then I will get the answer for specific rotation. Usually, sugar solutions show a specific rotation of 66.6 .6 degree, which is a standard value, but it can vary uh, as per your experimental setup. The biggest precaution of this experiment is to please read the uh, readings for full moon very carefully. And uh, optically active substances are those that have a tendency to rotate the plane of polarization of polarized light when propagated through it. Specific rotation of an optically active substance at a given temperature for a given wavelength of light is defined as the rotation of plane of polarization of incident polarized beam produced by one decimeter length of the substance of unit density. And polar uh, the uh, a unit of specific rotation is degree per decimeter per gram cubic meters, uh, cubic or degree per decimeter per kg meter cube. Saccharimeter is the name of polarimeter that is used for the analysis of sugar. Cane sugar is dextrorotatory. We have two types of substances, levorotatory and dextrorotatory. And uh, nickel prism, etc., are used to make the light a polarized one. Next, electrochemical equivalent of copper. I My aim of experiment is to find the electrochemical equivalent of copper once again using a tangent galvanometer. Apparatus required is copper voltameter, storage cell, plug key, rheostat, stopwatch, commutator, and tangent galvanometer. Formula used is ECE or electrochemical equivalent is equal to mass, change in mass upon current into time. Yeah, M is ZIT or Z is equal to M upon IT, where M is mass of copper deposited in T seconds by I ampere current. And my experimental setup diagram will consist of a circuit diagram, which consists of copper sulfate solution consisting of anode and cathode, a tangent galvanometer, commutator key setup, a meter in series, and a rheostat. Next, I will take number of turns of coil as 50. Circumference of the coil will be given to me on the setup. Suppose it is 48.5 centimeter. I will find out the radius. Mass of copper on the plate before deposition. Suppose it is 67 grams. I will now set up my circuit. Leave it for 50 minutes for the copper to deposit on it. And after 50 minutes, I will take out the plate, dry it, and I will take the mass. Suppose this time it comes as 68 grams. So the mass of copper deposited is 68 minus 67, that is 1 gram, and time I left it for deposition was, say, 50 minutes, so 15 to 60 seconds, and I, that is, I kept checking it at regular intervals that my apparatus is set, and pointers are giving me the range of 45 degree deflection because tan 45 is 1. And then I get the value of I. I put all these values in my formula and I get the value of electrochemical equivalent of copper. My standard value of ECE of copper is 3.2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 kg per coulomb. The precautions here are that tangent galvanometer should be lying in the magnetic meridian. Current must be steady throughout the experiment. It should not vary. Uh, 
mass of copper deposited is very small in grams so mass of copper deposited should be measured very accurately and usually faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction the mass of ions liberated by any electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the charge flowing through the electrolyte ece is defined as the mass of its ions liberated at an electrode when charge of one coulomb is passed through its electrolyte the liquid or salt solution which undergoes deposition on passing current through it is known as electrolyte copper sulfate has been used here in my experiment since it is based on tangent law it is known as tangent galvanometer and uh, f is equal to h tan theta next grating now to determine the wavelength of spectral lines using plane transmission grating apparatus required is diffraction grating spectrometer mercury vapor lamp spirit level and reading lens my formula used is a plus b sin theta equal to n lambda where a plus b is the grating element given by 2.54 divided by number of lines on the grating 2.54 comes from conversion factor of a n is number of lines which can be 12800 or 15000 as mentioned on the grating usually we are made to study the first order of spectra n equal to 1 so the formula reduces to lambda is equal to a plus b into sin theta and i start my experiment least count of my spectrometer is value of one main scale division upon total divisions on the vernier scale which could be 1 upon 60 degree or 1 upon 20 degree as per the setup given to me my circuit diagram will consist of a simple light source a collimator to make all the rays parallel a prism table and a, which is a part of a spectrometer light will fall on this and i will get a spectra of colors according to the diffraction spectra it will consist of one principal maxima followed by secondary maxima and minima for n equal to 1 or the first order i will take the value of these colors for msr vsr and tr that is violet color i will take the main scale reading plus vernier scale reading in two least count that is either 1 upon 60 degree or 1 upon 120 degree violet color i will observe on both sides of my principal maxima spectra i will subtract the total reading of violet color on either side i will get 2 theta i will divide it i will get theta i will take sine of it and i will get sine theta i will put these values in this formula here where i have found a plus b and i will get the answer for Or wavelength, whatever color I am visible to me. Grating must be of for minimum deviation. Carefully, it should be adjusted. Prism table, telescope, collimator, all should be adjusted properly because optics experiments. adjustment is a very important part of all my optic experiments diffraction grating is the arrangement of large number of equidistant narrow rectangular rectangular slits of equal width placed side by side parallel to one another if the width of the slit is a and slit width is a and opaque space is b then a plus b becomes the grating element essential parts of a spectrometer are collimator prism table and telescope ramdan's eyepiece is usually used in all telescopes and for my mercury vapor lamp argon gas has been used which is giving me as the white light source then my numerical aperture experiment to measure the numerical aperture of an optical fiber formula used is w upon under root 4 l square plus w square where w is diameter of the spot in millimeter which has been given to me in the physics lab and i have to find the distance between the fiber and screen in centimeters so i will draw my circuit diagram of core cladding acceptance angle etc and then i will make the observation table and the distance at which my first circle gets filled up i will take for the second third and fourth and put these values in this formula standard value of numerical aperture is 0.5 and biggest precaution is optical fiber cable should not be bent much because it consists of a dielectric inside it and the source of light should be chosen properly okay now what have i got to write 
in my practical uh, copy is something very important and I should be knowing that what all is to be mentioned in my physics practical final copy. That is very important. So let me have a quick look. See my external exams, which I will be giving, will be carrying 25 marks in which my viva will be of 10 marks. My copy performance will carry 10 marks and my file record will carry five marks. When what all I will try to take that experiment of which copy I can fill properly because my copy is going to carry marks for the university. Now, how will I get my marks in copy? If I write the aim of my experiment, I will get one mark. If I write the apparatus used, I will get one mark. If I write what formula I have used in the experiment, I will get one mark. If I make a circuit diagram, like suppose it is an optical experiment of Newton ring, then I will have to make the Newton ring circuit diagram. If it's a spectrometer, I have to make the spectrometer diagram. If it is nodal slide, I will have to make the optical bench. And if it is an electrical setup, like electrochemical equivalent of copper, variation of magnetic field, etc., where I had to connect it by wires, then I have to show the electric circuit. For that, I will get my one mark, I have to draw a very neat and clean observation table mentioning total reading, main scale reading, vernier reading, first reading, distance, etc. I have to show the calculations in my copy and then the result if standard value has been given to me, well and good. Otherwise, I can just mention the result and I will write any two or three precautions. I do not have to write theory and procedure of the experiment in my copy. No theory procedure has to be written because they do not carry any marks in my final exam. My final exam marking scheme is as follows. Aim apparatus used, formula used, circuit diagram, observation table, calculations, result, percentage error, and precautions. Thank you. And the best of luck.